one. Well, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I am excited to present another destination dive into the Canadian Rockies and even more specifically into uh, traveling by luxury train. Well, I've asked my um, new friend, Jeff Caesar, who is a business development manager with Rocky Mountaineer, if he would be willing to present some information to all of us, giving us a little more information about not only Rocky Mountaineer, but also about the Canadian Rockies. And um, this particular this particular train um, journey is of interest to many of you. And so I wanted to give you a little more information um, and insight. And that's where Jeff comes in so valuable because he's been with the company. He knows what, what they can offer. And so um, I'm going to hand it over to Jeff from here. Thank you so much, Melissa. It's a pleasure to speak to you all. And I cannot thank you enough for your time. You should all know you're in such great hands by working with Melissa Fail from RLX Travel Group, Think Relax. She is a pro, a preferred partner of Rocky Mountaineer. And I really encourage you to definitely reach out to her for all of your questions. She probably knows all the answers, but if you do stump her, I'm in her back pocket to be utilized. So you're in such great hands, I'm telling you that right now. Now, I, I've heard that she shared with you some great videos of Rocky Mountaineer. This presentation is gonna be uh, probably 25 to 30 minutes, but it's gonna go into depth, hopefully answering once again, many questions you may have. If you don't know anything about Rocky Mountaineer, that's okay, I'm gonna start from the ground up. So who we are is we are a train and tour operator based in the Canadian Rockies. It's a luxury, fine dining, seamless travel experience where you never sleep on board. You stay in hotels every night because if you're sleeping, you're missing the sights, the scenery, the wildlife, and the wilderness. Now, we've been doing this for 30 years, 30 breathtaking years. And I want to tell you all right now that even though we're in a certain state of pandemic, Rocky Mountaineer is not going anywhere. We will be able to have the cash flow to survive this pandemic, and we are planning to open and operate in 2021. In fact, we're seeing a huge amount of demand for 2021. I attribute that to four great reasons. First, in this crazy world we live in, Canada is a place deemed safe, knock on wood. The U.S. versus Canadian currency is at an incredible discount. You're looking at around 20 to 25 percent. So you get a lot of bang for your buck when heading up north. Brings me to my third point. In regards to location, Canada is a country a lot closer to the, than other countries and continents where you live in. So it's a little more easier, more economical to get to where your vacation begins. Finally, if you've done a river cruise, an ocean cruise, an all-inclusive, and looking for something a little more unique and different, perhaps maybe not being on a boat during these times, I totally understand. Rocky Mountaineer is that answer. We're going to be going, uh, doing, excuse me, uh, our best to make sure we handle the most safe uh, health standards while working on board. There's still an opportunity where we may be able to operate in 2020, but in 2021, we're already developing certain plans for the safety on board. We are going to be checking everyone's temperatures. We'll be maintaining very little group consolidation whatsoever. Like for example, taking the motor coach over to the train station, not using really the train station other than a place to walk through and see it, because that just kind of holds crowds. We'll take you right to the train station, right onto the train car. Once again, minimizing the amount of crowds you are in. And so this really breaks down who we are, where we are, and what we are all about. I like to break it down into four different steps. First, choosing your rail route. Here is where Rocky Mountaineer is located. We have three different routes taking you across from Vancouver into the Canadian Rockies. These are color coordinated. Melissa should have shared with you already some great videos. We have one to two minute videos on every single route. One to two minutes on our service levels, which I'll talk about in just a little bit. So please be sure to check those out to see some of the highlights of what it's like on board our trains and as we take you into the beautiful Canadian Rockies. Please also know the Rocky Mountaineer handles everything for you. The hotels, transfers, tours, meals, everything except airfare. Uh, and the best thing about us, if there's one thing you can take away from the short time we have together, remember how customizable we are. Customization is key, allowing you to really work with your budget. Choose from three star properties to five diamond resorts. Add nights, take away nights, add tours, take away tours. Like I said, work with your budget. That's the best thing about Rocky Mountaineer. Now, I love starting in Vancouver and heading eastbound because when you head this direction, the hills become mountains. The mountains then become glaciers. 
The wildlife gets so much more abundant and climatic. Truly the best, the best is yet to come. Jasper Lake, the Weeson Banff. If you haven't heard or been to these places, I'm telling you, you definitely want to make sure you make this possible over the near future. That dotted green line between Jasper Lake, the Weeson Banff is the Columbia Icefield Parkway. Been voted the most scenic highway in the world. Now, the way Rocky Mountaineer operates is you choose between three different routes to take. Let's say you want to start in Vancouver. <clears throat> Just with your luggage, your luggage is extremely seamless. We don't want you to burn any calories. We'll take your luggage from the hotel, from your starting point, and put it on the truck. The only thing you can bring on the train with you is your camera, camcorder, wallet, cell phone, purse, ID, medication. Keep it light and keep it simple. And then when you get to places like Whistler or Kamloops or Jasper or Lake Louise or Banff, before you even get off the train, we're going to give you your hotel room key. You've already been checked into the hotel. A bus will pull up right next to the train. You hop on there, head over to the hotel, and find your room. And inside your room, your luggage will be waiting for you next to your bed. The next day when you wake up, once again, in order to minimize the amount of calories you're burning, leave your luggage exactly how you found it next to your bed. And you'll see the next destination, a true seamless experience. So back to what I was saying, let's say you're starting in Vancouver. You board the train between 8 and 9 in the morning and head eastbound. If you're going on either the red or blue route, you'll arrive in Kamloops between 5 and 6.30 p.m. Have a clean, accommodating place to sleep, get a good rest, and then the next day, board between 8 and in the morning, and continue heading east over to the beautiful Canadian Rockies. Once you get to the Canadian Rockies, I encourage you, I implore you to please spend at least two nights in each area. If, if time is under the essence, you can't do all three areas, then just do two. But don't just do one night in, for example, Lake Louise, or one night in Banff. Because when you check in in the evening and check out first thing in the morning, you're going to regret rushing through this beautiful part of the world. You need to slow time down. You can do a full day tour, a half day tour, or just a day of leisure. Do what makes sense once again. Work with your budget. Choose the hotels that make the most sense. But spend at least, I would say, four to six nights taking all in what the Canadian Rockies have to offer. After you spend four to six nights, if you want to make it a one-way trip, head to Calgary and fly home from there. Or you could do a round trip, or we call those circle journeys. After spending four to six nights in the Canadian Rockies, head on a new route, a different route than the one you went eastbound on, a new route, colored route, back westbound to Vancouver. And I actually, later in this presentation, have some great uh, different itineraries that I truly love. And that will help explain everything even further in depth on how it works and which ones I highly recommend. Step two, choose your rail service. We have Silverleaf and Goldleaf. Silverleaf is a single-story car, panoramic views with an arch window at the top. You have an outdoor vestibule area that holds up to six people. So you can go outside anytime you like, take pictures and video, have a breath of fresh air. On board, you have three hosts or hostesses who handle the history, cultural facts, storytelling, and jokes, keeping you entertained, aware and up-to-date of what's coming up ahead. You have all-inclusive alcohol, so you can truly drink to your heart's content. But remember, as you go up in elevation, that one glass of wine could be more like three, and it could be the most expensive nap of your life. I'm totally just kidding, but some people do end up taking a, a nap, and it is a very expensive nap, so don't be one of those people. It's not worth it. When it comes to food, it is Michelin-trained chefs cooking made-to-order food literally a few feet away from where you're sitting. On Silverleaf, you're going to have one to two appetizer options, two to three entree options, and a dessert option that will change daily for breakfast, lunch, sometimes dinner, pending your itinerary. These will be plated and brought to your seat. Now, Gold Leaf is a two-story car, 360-degree dome windows on the top level. You have an outdoor vestibule area here that holds up to 16 people, three times the size larger than what you have on Silverleaf. See those big picture windows on the first level underneath the word Rocky? That's your dining area. So instead of eating at your seat like you would on Silverleaf, you have a full dining area. And underneath the word Mountaineer, where there are no windows, that is a kitchen which is three times the size larger than on Silverleaf, giving you a lot more variety of food. I will circle back to food in just a second, but first upstairs. You see the whole glass-covered ceiling, which is great for taking pictures and seeing all the sights and scenery along your whole entire way. You have four hosts as opposed to three, all-inclusive alcohol as well. And when it comes to a feast for the senses, you have once again Michelin-trained chefs cooking made-to-order food, this time, like I said before, with a lot of more variety two to three appetizer options, five to six entree options, and multiple dessert options that change daily for all of your meals. 
My favorite place on the train car, however, is our outdoor viewing platform, our outdoor veranda space. You have speakers out here, so you can hear where the commentary is being offered inside. And this is just a great place to get the fresh forest smells, to see the wildlife and wilderness up close. This is another good opportunity to share with you some differences between our train and other trains out there you may be more familiar with. For example, Amtrak or Via Rail. Via Rail is the exact same thing as Amtrak. This is a commuter train based up in Canada, taking it from point A to point B as fast as possible. On Amtrak and Via Rail, you sleep on board the majority of the times, usually in a bunk bed with a shared toilet. Remember on Rocky Mountaineer, never sleep on board. The speed is a big difference. On Amtrak and Via Rail, their average speed is 60 to 75 miles an hour, where Rocky Mountaineer's average speed is around 30 to 35 miles an hour. We slow down to less than five miles an hour for all the bridges, the waterfalls, the wildlife, and the wilderness. Another big difference between us and them are the train tracks that we use. Please know that no other passenger train is allowed on the same train tracks the Rocky Mountaineer uses. We're the only passenger train allowed to go by Pyramid Falls, by some of the amazing bridges, and of course, the famous spiral tunnels. Now, if you never heard of the spiral tunnels, let me just kind of share with you a small story, but this really also kind of adds to how unique and different Rocky Mountaineer is. The spiral tunnels were built back in the 1900s when they were completing the train tracks from east to west and then the Rocky Mountains to navigate through. A series of engineers built a series of tunnels and our train being the only passenger train allowed to do this will go through the base of a Rocky Mountain into a tunnel and spiral going up in elevation to about 500 feet. When at that point we will exit the tunnel and go around the circumference of that mountain offering spectacular views. Then it'll go back through another tunnel and spiral a different direction going up to 1,000 feet. So when you get out of the tunnel at 1,000 feet, the views that are at the 500-foot level on one side of the train will be on the other side of the train at the 1,000-foot level. You continue to go up in elevation until about 2,250 feet, where most places in the world, you're near the bottom looking up at these mammoth mountains. But on Rocky Mountaineer, you're near the top looking down. And it's something extremely memorable and you'll never forget. The spiral tunnels are featured on our first passage to the west. That's that red route between Vancouver and Kamloops and then over into Lake Louise and Banff. Now, when it comes to wildlife, this does work in our favor. I should have said a preface it that uh, our train tracks that we use are not just for us. That would be amazing, but it's not true. We do share these train tracks with freight. And freight, the majority of the time, is carrying automobiles, produce, grain, wheat, and barley. Now, animals like you see on your screen here have become quite trained. The black bear, the brown bear, grizzly bear, moose, elk, deer, coyotes, bighorn sheep, etc. When they hear a train in our tracks, they think it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner time. They come out of the woods, the riverbeds, the mountains, and it's really special and amazing to see these wildlife, wild animals up close going at less than, I mean, for us, we're going at less than one or two miles an hour, plenty of time to take pictures and video and just see them in their natural habitat. I'm going to share with you now when is the best time to travel to see this wildlife? Step three, choose your season. We operate from mid-April to mid-October. And there are pluses to every time of the season, depending when you want to travel with us. In April, May, beginning of June, it's the end of hibernation. So statistically, you get a lot more wildlife at this time. There's more snow present on the mountains, ice on the lakes. The temperatures in mid-May are around mid-70s in the day and mid-60s at night. In the summer, it's the best weather, 80s in the day, 70s at night. Everything's lush green. Everything's in bloom. It's not surprising to go for a month or two without seeing a single drop of rain, very dry, beautiful climate. And in the autumn, September, October, it's the fall foliage with the leaves changing color, which lights up the sides of the mountains with beautiful, vibrant colors. My personal opinion, the best time to travel would either be May or September. It's not just because of the wildlife and not just because of the fall foliage. But something about the demand, usually July and August is our peak season, and we get the most crowds, the most traffic, the most congestion. So if you'd like to limit the amount of people, uh, definitely think about May, think about September, and you'll definitely have probably less crowds than you would in the peak season of the summer. When it comes to our tours, it's very easy to understand how we built all these and put them in together. Know that all of our most popular raved about and reviewed tours, the ones that everyone wants to do, have been bundled and packaged into our, all our tours, our itineraries. So tours like the Ice Explorer, take you on to Athabasca Glacier that you can go play in the snow. Gondola the rides, take you to the top of multiple peaks and summits throughout the Canadian Rockies area. You can take a day trip or spend several nights over in Victoria Island and go visit Butchard Gardens. Or do a helicopter tour, giving you a bird's eye view of the beautiful lakes, waterfalls, and glaciers below. 
but maybe you're scared of heights and uh, doing a helicopter tour is something you don't want to pay for or do. You can easily tell Melissa anytime, I'd like to remove that tour and put another tour in its place or remove that tour and bring the entire price of the itinerary, the entire vacation down because even though these are bundled and built in, there is a price of value attributed to them. So like hotels, you can customize all the different tours too. Do what makes sense, work with your budget, and do what you want to do. When it comes to our motor coaches, know that we don't use yellow buses or Greyhound buses. We have a fleet of motor coaches operated by Brewster. These have all been completely refurbished at the beginning of the 2019 season. Wood grain paneling throughout, leather seats throughout the entire coach, TV so you can see what the driver's seeing up ahead. You have a drink station on board to keep you well hydrated, and of course, a tour guide on board, giving you the commentary, the history, the knowledge, and telling you what's outside your window at all times. Or, what's becoming perhaps a more popular option due to this pandemic, you can not go on the motor coach, you could rent a car through Rocky Mountaineer and do a self-drive exploration. We will encourage you to download an app on your phone, and it'd be like a tour guide telling you where to go and what to see so you're not missing anything. But this is becoming very popular, especially people don't want to be around other people they don't know. Understandable until a vaccine cure is out. And I'm praying that by the end of this year, a vaccine cure will be out. And this will be a distant memory that we all had to live through. But the self-drive exploration is something that's very popular. So if you'd like to be more on your own, do things to your own accord, all you got to do is let Melissa know. When it comes to the ultimate experience, connecting it with a cruise, I will tell you in 2019, 49% of people who were on Rocky Mountain here had a pre- or post-cruise tour attachment. Perhaps you're thinking about doing an Alaska cruise, but you've already done Denali, looking for something unique and different. Please know uh, Rocky Mountain here would definitely be the answer. I'd recommend a post-cruise tour. So at the end of your cruise, jump on board with us, head eastbound, and fly home from Calgary by making the icing on the cake the Canadian Rockies, something unique, something different, something new that you never experienced before. So very popular. Finally, step four, choose your package. I want to go through further details, and this is what I, I referenced before, some feature packages that I love. The first passage to the West of Leisure, two days on the Rocky Mountaineer train, four nights in the Canadian Rockies. Here you can see we skip Jasper on this, but you still head up the Columbia Iceville Parkway halfway, doing the Ice Explorer, doing the Glacial Skywalk. You have a helicopter tour included, and four nights in the Canadian Rockies. Great itinerary. My favorite one-way itinerary is the Journey Through the Clouds Explorer. The reason why it's got four tours built into it that are fantastic. The only thing I would change is the number one next to Lake Louise and the one next to Banff. Because like I said before, you need to have at least two nights in these areas. Slow time down. You can do a full day of leisure, a half day of leisure, uh, a half day, a full day tour, a half day tour, or a full day of leisure. Uh, it's all up to you. Uh, but definitely, I would add a night in Lake Louise and add a night in Banff. So it's two days on the Rocky Mountaineer train, six nights in the Canadian Rockies, and flying out of Calgary. Great one way. My favorite round trip is our Grand Rail Circle. It's five days on the Rocky Mountaineer train. You go on the red route first, heading eastbound, which goes to the spiral tunnels. You spend seven nights in the Canadian Rockies. This is a true check mark to visiting and seeing all that the Canadian Rockies have to offer. Uh, the first passage to the West Highlights in Vancouver Island. Here you do a, a trip over to Victoria, spend two nights. You can stay at the Fairmont Empress Hotel. Oh, those are the properties we have on Victoria Island. But go visit Butchart Gardens and see the beautiful island that is right next door to Vancouver. Then head uh, eastbound over to Banff. You can see here you spend two nights in Banff with a day trip over to Lake Louise. So you're able to experience the beautiful lake. You may have a lunch or dinner if you like, and then head back to Banff in the evening. Now, what's new for 2021? We do have some brand new itineraries, some new tours that I'm very happy to share with you. The Journey Through the Clouds Glacial Explorers for someone who is extremely active and would like to do and see as much as possible. Here there are seven tours built into this itinerary. New tours like the Jasper Park Motorcycle Tour, the Evening Ice Explorer, the Morning Glacial Skywalk, the uh, Banff Glacier Helicopter Tour, the Discover Banff and its Wildlife Sightseeing Tour, the Moraine Lake and Lake Louise Sightseeing Tour, and so many more. So it's something definitely new and unique that you can definitely take advantage for those who are very active. Or you can try this other new itinerary, the first passage to the West, Kananaskis Highlights. I personally have been to Kananaskis. It's a beautiful resort nestled in the heart of the Rockies. You don't have really much shopping around here. It's, it's, you're really in nature. You can see the water in the picture in the background. That's from Kananaskis. Uh, beautiful Rockies all around you. A lot of wildlife, too, in this area. 
This itinerary has three new tours, the Coast Mountain Adventure Helicopter Tour, a uh, Banff tour including Lake Louisa Moraine Lake, as well as a full one-day admission to the Nordic Spa at the Kananaskis property. So some unique experiences to definitely look into. No matter what you choose, it's going to be a trip of a lifetime. Speaking of that, with our awards and recognition, maybe you've heard of a site called TripAdvisor, a place where people spew hate and anger and negative feedback. It's true. A lot of people are angry out there. But I should let you know, on TripAdvisor, we've been given the Certificate of Excellence for Customer Service over the past 19 years in a row. National Geographic has given us best train trip to take for the past three years in a row. We have more awards and accolades than the Orient Express. So what does this mean to you? I really hope that means peace of mind. Whether you travel with us in 2021 or 2022 or many years from now, know that we are really all about making a true trip of a lifetime. We're not going anywhere anytime soon. We're only expanding. We're only growing. And we would love to show you what the Canadian Rockies have to offer. Finally, when it comes to promotions, I want you all to be aware that Rocky Mountaineer does not discount. We don't rebate. We don't work with companies like Costco, even though I love Costco. We don't. The promos do change, and they're very easy to understand how they operate. It's always the richest added value at the beginning of the season, and that only decreases as we get closer. So if you book early, you get more bang for your buck. Our current promo goes from now until August 28th, where you receive up to $800 per couple, two free hotel nights, a free limo transfer either to or from the airport, and a free dinner at your hotel choice. After August 29th, this will drop to up to $600 in added value, and one of the perks will disappear. I believe it's one of the hotel nights. So it will be one hotel night, limo transfer, and a free dinner. After January 1st, it will drop to two perks, up to $400 in added value. After April 1st, it will drop to one perk, up to $200 in added value. So I'm just being very candid and transparent with you all. You book now. And I'm not saying just this second, but you have until end of August, pretty much, August 28th. And it only takes a $25 deposit to hold your booking. Very little up front. So you definitely have time to kind of uh, to watch the news. Hopefully, once again, by the end of this year, the, the pandemic will have a cure and a vaccine. And life as we knew it will return back to normal. But know that this is the richest offer that we have for the 2021 season. It will not get richer than this. It's truly the best time to book. And once again, you're working with such a preferred partner, Melissa she she knows probably everything and will be able to put you on an amazing customized vacation. I promise you that. So with that, I want to thank you all again for your time. I'd love to bring Melissa back on where she can just definitely end it with you, but here's her contact information. So definitely do reach out to her. And uh, Melissa, I want to thank you again for making this possible for me to educate your clients. Well, thanks, Jeff. Hey, I, I am so glad that you um, put a little information on about the new tours available on the new itineraries, because I do know, <clears throat> excuse me, I do know that we have quite a few of our, um, our guests that are interested in more active tours. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's, those are really interesting. Um, and I think I need to dive in more on those just to learn all about them. Um, so I just appreciate your time. Thanks so much for hopping on the line with me and preparing all of the slides because I know that um, sometimes seeing seeing something helps people really um, understand what it would look like or feel like once they're on that tour. And I know that the one thing that interests so many people are trains. So seeing what the, the uh, gold leaf car was look would look like versus the silver leaf car just putting that into a visual helps people understand what the value is oh i have more ability to see i have more ability to um experience uh you know a, a bigger dining selection so i appreciate you putting all the pictures together and for all of you who, uh, who have uh, hopped on the line with us too we appreciate your participation and i look forward to hearing from you soon aloha Thank you for joining. Bye-bye. Take care, everyone. Thanks again.